Now, I want you to think about where you were around May to August of 2020. And it's kind of crazy that that was two years ago, right? But there was a lot going on at this time. I mean, we're a few months into a global pandemic that takes us out of physical school for a while. Um, COVID's become a thing. Race relations are at an all time high. And it was a very, very dark time, especially since the only real contact we have was social media. And it was a very, very bleak time for anybody. But for me in particular, I grew up in this sort of time frame just as much as the rest of you. I worked with a lot of organizations like Philadelphia Student Union and Herb Ed as a rising junior in high school. I attended many Black Lives Matter rallies and I truly did my best to be able to help black and brown youth in the city of Philadelphia. But in this time frame, you couldn't really be able to go on anywhere like TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, whatever, and not see some form of discussion around COVID-19 or Black Lives Matter, for example. But they were necessary. They were easy ways for us to be able to have discussions on things that were happening around our world. However, there was something that was going to come up that did sort of try to stop that, which are the assumptions of critical race theory, or CRT, and the censorship of controversial topics. Now, if you don't really understand why this is a big deal, let me give you a sitch. So basically, a lot of politicians felt that talking about things like Black Lives Matter, race relations, COVID-19, and how we should be staying safe, LGBTQ plus issues, you name it, they had a problem with it, which kind of became ironic seeing as if they had like the claim that we were the you know sensitive ones, but whatever. Basically, it became an issue because they felt as if that people were being fed this woke propaganda or whatever they choose to call it. And it became a real difficult way for people to truly understand what was going on around them, specifically with the fact that they made a bill in October 2022. And I'm not joking when I say this, this is an actual bill's name, the Stop the Sexualization of Children Act. Yes, that is the name. I wish I was joking. The creator of that bill, Mike Johnson, said, quote, the Democrat Party and their cultural allies are on a crusade to immerse young children in sexual imagery in radical gender ideology at school and in public, end quote. Now, I'm not sure how teaching children that LGBTQ plus people exist is immersing young children in sexual imagery, but hey, that's what a lot of people were thinking around this time when it came to certain type of things. They also took a huge thing towards critical race theory, which might I add is a law course, nowhere near being taught in public schools, but they wanted to make you think that that's what was happening. Donald Trump even decided to talk about this for some reason and said, quote, it was a crusade against American history and ideological poison that will destroy our country. You can see very vitriolic language towards something that they don't even know that they're talking about because critical race theory, again, is not being taught in public schools. So it would not even have this effect. But the solution that I have might actually be the thing that they don't want you to do to not make assumptions. There is no agenda and no one is just saying this to get brownie points. I mean, sure, there's always an exception to the rule, but the majority of us are not doing that. Simply pointing out America's truths are not going to make people want to hate America or make people think that we are trying to brainwash people because that's not what this is. For example, Kimberly Crenshaw, who is an American advocate and the inventor of the term intersectionality, said, quote, we are a society that has been structured from top to bottom by race. You do not get beyond that by deciding not to talk about it anymore. It will always come back. It will always reassert itself over and over again. So let's just be what we say we are about. We cannot say that we're this amazing intersectional country in this multinational, like multicultural country, and then not want to talk about the things that made this country a multinational or multicultural country in the first place. For example, you cannot just use the quotes of Malcolm X and Martin Luther King Jr. and then denigrate and prohibit their teachings from being taught in schools. For example, Malcolm X said, quote, you cannot separate peace from freedom because no one can be at peace until he has his freedom. You cannot just take away the freedom to be taught these things in school while still claiming that we're a peaceful nation. And one of the most 
quotable lines from Dr. King was, quote, drive, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. We cannot claim that we're this loving nation and then still perpetuate these things that are easily one of the most detrimental things in our society. So to close, I want to give some advice. It is up to you if you truly want to learn about what makes our country the country that it is. No one is saying that you have to be a straight, you know, radical thinker by any means. But to quote Michael Jackson, if you want to make the world a better place, take a look at yourself, then make a change. Thank you.